Hey everyone, it's Valor from Online Combat Battalion with another Armour 3 editor tutorial for you. Um, someone did ask a while ago how to uh, fire a tri trigger or end a task when two specific units are in it rather than one or rather than blue for or op for etc. So I'll show you how to do that. I'll also show you how to uh, do a few little extra things in the editor that you may not be aware of if you are a new mission maker. So let's get started with this trigger thing first. Okay, so we've got a playable unit which we always need to have. And I've set up a task. So to get to tasks, we go to systems, Intel, create task, place it down. We'll also need a set task state, which you can also get under Intel. And we've got a couple of triggers. Now I've placed the trigger here and I've resized it because I don't need it to be big and in the trigger I have activation type any player present and that is then synced by right clicking connect sync to the task module so that trigger will fire this task. Inside the task I have the owner as all playable units task ID T1 for task 1 and I've got a task title and a task description and I have it set as assigned. You can also change these little icons down here that will pop up and I'll change it to meet because you've got to meet someone. Now uh, I've got a set task state which you can also get from here and I've double clicked that and set it as succeeded and that is synced again by right clicking connect and sync to the create task module. I have another trigger here and this is the trigger that's going to work for us to complete the task when two separate units um, are inside the trigger. So for my playable unit I double left click. I've given given him a variable name of S for Sierra 1. I've also placed a civilian up here and I've given him the variable name of R for Romeo 1. So two variables this is R1 and this guy is S1. Now I want this task to be completed when you meet with this guy or R1. So I'll move the trigger to here and I don't know if you noticed but I have a move waypoint for this guy. I'll just delete it and show you how to add a move waypoint if you are not familiar. You can select the unit hold down left shift and right click and it will create a move waypoint for you. Alternatively you can go to waypoints, uh, default, go to move and click on the map will do the same thing. Now I want this guy to move into the trigger that I've placed to end or complete this task so I'm going to drag left click and drag that move waypoint into the trigger. Now this inside the trigger, double left click, this is what is going to uh, complete the task um, only when the two variables S1 and R1 are inside the trigger. And I'll put this in the description but it's just call and then in brackets S1 in this list semicolon close bracket and 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 the same again here uh, with R1 in this list semicolon and bracket. Now the activation type you need to set for this rather than being any player must be set to anybody because you're using an AI or a non-playable unit and he's an anybody, he's not an any player. Okay, now obviously we have blue 4 here and we have civilian. 
you could not use this as an activation with blue 4 present because that won't then recognize the civilian you couldn't use op 4 independent um, either because uh, he's not either of those he is a civilian but it won't recognize the presence of the blue 4 unit so just use anybody okay and I'll show you how that works okay so I'm in the mission I'm walking towards the task been assigned the task and now I'm actually inside the trigger that completes the task but you'll notice the task is not yet completed and it won't be until this guy is also inside the trigger and there we go task is completed and that's because both variable names are inside the trigger Now a couple of little uh, editor tricks or features that you may not be aware of. Um, I've placed this guy and all the equipment, uniform, weapon, etc. Everything he has is the default for that unit type from that mod. But I want to change some of his gear. So you can right click and go to edit loadout. And if you're running ACE you can use the ACE arsenal but I'm just using the Bohemia Interactive Virtual Arsenal. Just click on that. It will then open this up and here you can change any of the gear that he has. So I don't like his rifle so I'm going to change that to uh, one of those. Um, his headgear I'm not a fan of so I'm going to change that to um, uh, a multi. Um, now inside his backpack when I click on this you get another display here on the right hand side with all the stuff that you can put into his backpack um, so they will only be uh, all the magazines etc go to the next one it's mags again next one's grenades or things that can be thrown so uh, not only grenades but um, uh, a stone if you want to throw a stone or chem lights or smoke grenades etc. The next one down, next icon is explosives. So any of those available in the game that a player can use. And the last one is miscellaneous items. And this is where you're going to get things like um, compasses, um, maps, mine detectors, wire cutters, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and you can say for example here, I still don't know why they added a banana, but there's a banana and I want to put two of them in my backpack so I click on the little plus symbol here and that's added two bananas to my backpack you can also go over here and click on vest and again you'll get another list over here I'm going to go to miscellaneous items and I'm going to add a uh, couple of cable ties to my vest and I don't like his glasses so I'm going to take them off or his shemag and his glasses I'm going to click OK. Now I'll play the scenario in, in uh, multiplayer and it's always best if you're making multiplayer missions to test your missions in multiplayer rather than single player. And once I load in, if I go to my inventory for my backpack you'll see that I have two bananas and in my vest I have two sets of cable ties which I didn't have before and of course my weapon is now different to what it was before as well as my headgear so that's how you can change stuff um, or your loadout in the editor for each of your units you can also do a similar thing with vehicles I'll just place down an RHS tank here and it's pretty cool but I want to change some things on it so right click and go to edit the vehicle appearance and here's our tank and I'm going to change a few things on this so all we need to do is go up to these two icons up here top left let's go to components I'm going to hide the Duke antennas I'm going to hide the IFF, pan IFF panels and I'm going to hide the miles panels and I think I might like to make it olive drab 
woodland. Yeah, let's leave it at olive drab. Okay, and then you've changed the appearance of your tank. You can pretty much do that with, uh, I believe, pretty much all vehicles. Um, let's try... Um, one of these things. And I think these have uh, a lot more editable components on them. So I'm going to edit the vehicle appearance. Yeah. So I'm going to fold the mirrors. I'm going to... Um, hide the drivers and vent, oh no, I'll leave that there. Uh, the exhaust, GPS antenna, uh, the rear fuel cans, I can hide those. Uh, rear water cans, I think you get the idea. Basically you can customize your uh, vehicle and you can change the color to whatever you uh, want to change it to. And click OK and that will stay as it is for your mission. Another little trick is if you've placed down a unit and you've given him, say for example, a variable name of S1 and you've got him synced to triggers and um, uh, the, the variable name is really important and you don't really want to delete him and then add another unit, you can actually go double left click and change the object type. So I'm going to change this from an Australian SAS operator to a British Army uh, man who is a rifleman and when I click OK it'll completely change to a uh, new unit type but the variable name of S1 will still be applicable to him so his position won't change his variable name won't change it's just the actual unit type has changed. Now this next little trick I'm going to uh, add another uh, soldier I'm going to add a another crewman so I've changed my playable unit to a crewman I've added another one and then I'm going to right click connect and group to the playable unit so I now have uh, an AI troop with me now this is a cool trick um, there are some mods and modules out there that do this but there's really no need to do this and what it is is if you want to crew that tank and you also want to drive it and gun at the same time this is how you do it. So I'm going to order my crewman into the tank and he will get into the driver's seat. I will now get into the gunner's seat and I can then start the engine by pressing the W key to move forward and because this is an RHS tank it takes a little bit of a wind up engine is ready now when I move as though I were driving but I'm not actually driving. The AI is driving. He's just following my movements. So I'm actually in the gunner's seat. The AI player is in the driver's seat. So you're able to actually drive the tank and gun at the same time, which is kind of like a battlefield thing, I guess. But if you've got a limited number of people in your community and you wanted to have a, uh, a tank sort of a mission with a few tanks in it, this is a good way to uh, basically save some manpower resources. Uh, you'll notice too that the RHS tanks take a little bit of time to reload uh, they're probably not all that realistic um, so they can actually load quite a bit faster than that in real life but that's how you do that being able to drive a tank and uh, gun at the same time another benefit with the RHS and in particular for using ACE is your turret is stabilised so I'm driving along and my turret is 
pretty stabilised. It's not bouncing up and down, even though the, the turret or, or the hull of the vehicle is. And you'll see it as I'm going along that the turret is nice and stable. It's not going up or down, which is realistic. So this has just been a short video to show you how to uh, fire a trigger with two separate variables inside the trigger, um, which won't fire until both are in it, and a few little uh, editor or game tricks that you can use to uh, change things up a little bit. I'll place the code for this trigger into the description. And remember we have anybody present to fire this one. And this has just been a short video to show you how to do that, as well as a few other things that you can do in the editor to switch things up a little bit. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate the support and I will see you in the next video.